Hey guys, Paradox Gaming here, and today I'm returning to a Python tutorial. And uh, I know these other things are quite boring and they're quite long, so today, um, okay, as you know, I've got a new mic. This is my first recording on my new computer, which has uh, a headset over here. I have a headset over here, so it's much better mic quality. Um, I also have, you know, uh, much more RAM, so things could get done a lot faster. So yeah, um, today I'm um, rather than doing little things that are quite boring, we're going to make a game. We're going to make rock, paper, scissors. So I've made it all laid out. I've got a success criteria here. So what we want the computer to do is ask for our choice, input, uh, and then we have to input our choice by typing on the keyboard, randomly generate opponent's choice. Uh, yes, uh, tell us what um what our opponent chose. I don't know what it says out. And then tell who wins. It's going to tell us all these things. Do all these things for us. So okay, let's start off. Um, okay, so when you when you open up Python, it will go here. So it will come to this screen. Tell you your version you're on, your computer's bit, your, your your you know your graphics card, whatever. And you want to do file, new file. And I've already done that. And when you click new file, it will come up with this, an empty blank sheet. And this is where you can save stuff too make nice things with it. So, okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it ask us what our choice is. So, to to make it uh, say stuff to you, you've got to write print. So it's going to print out on screen either a value, like we learnt in the other things, like, uh, you know, if we the dog equals five, we could say print dog and it would print five. Or we could just make it print actual strings, which are collections of characters. So print welcome, welcome to our game. Uh, welcome to Rock Paper Scissors. Okay, and then if you want to make it print on a new line without writing on a new line, so the next line down, you just do forward slash n, and it won't print that n. And you just carry on writing. Uh, what do you choose? And then you just end it with a bracket. So then, yeah, now we want to make it so what the player's input um, equals. So yeah, let's just save it first. Okay, where do you want to save it to? We want to save it to documents and new new no make a new folder. And we'll call it this computer is very empty. Python. Save it in there. So we'll call it um, rock, paper, scissors. Okay. So let's run this. So you need to save it before you can even run the module. Press one module. Okay. Welcome to our rock, paper, scissors game. As you can see, it actually does cut it off. What do you choose? <coughs> and then it ends. These arrows mean to signify the end. It's finish the program. So yeah, my mouse is a bit okay. So now it does it does the first thing on our success right criteria, ask for our choice. So f to input our choice, we need to do input. So that's actually what you e you can't just do input equals, you need to do a variable which stores the input. So we'll type in um, player We'll just make the variable called player, you know, and it equals input. So whatever we type in, player will now equal. So we could type in dog, and it would equal dog. But we don't want a uh, dog. We just want it to actually recognise rock, paper, and scissors. So we're going to make a list. Now this is important because this is what we learned. To make lists use square brackets. So first of all, we want to call the list uh, suitable. So you know, like what's suitable? Suitables equals. So we want to do it in quotation marks because you're going to write stuff in, and when you write stuff in for a variable, the input is always stored as a string. So if you write in here rock, it's going to think that's some sort of variable, and it's going to look for it, and it won't find anything. So you want to store it as strings, because we're going to make it so it checks inside suitables, and when you type in something into input, it's going to store it as a string, even even numbers. So we'll type in rock, comma, paper, comma, um, scissors. Oh. And then we do, and we end it. So that's how we do our suitables. So now player's going to equal that. 
and we're going to make the computer check to see if your input is in that list. So we're going to do a while function. So a while can yeah, a while statement. So a while statement will keep checking if it, if the statement is not met, it will um. If the statement is met, it will keep doing running down that line of code. This is where indentation comes in. So what we're going to do is going to write. We're going to write while player. So it's going to check the value in player, not in. So if you said in, then it would be in that. But not in suitables. Um, so then you put a colon at the end, and when you press return or enter, it will go and indent itself. That means it's right. If you do it here, that's not inside the actual loop. You want to indent it. So we're going to make it so it prints out. Please write, write rock, paper, scissors. Now, something's going to happen if we run this. I want you to see if you can guess what will happen if we just write this and we don't put the input in again run module what do you choose? egg as you can see it's printing it out over and over and over and that's because we didn't make it so you could redo the input so what it's doing is it's checking this part egg is not in there so it's, it's going to go down here please write rock paper scissors and then it's going to go back to here because the code's ended it's going to check the while loop again it's not good so you need to make it so that loop can be broken so you could just write break which will just break out of any loop but we don't want that we want it so you can input something again so we're going to write player equals input so every time it says that you get a chance to input something and if it's in those it'll check if it's in suitables in here and if it is it'll break out this function this um this conditional will not be net met because player will be in suitables so it'll break out and it'll go down here this is where the opponent um this thing is randomly generated so we have to make it randomly generated the problem is to do random generations we need to um, and we need modules modules it's best to have them at the top of your script like all the variables that you start off with you want import and then random you can do other things like import math to do math stuff like square roots but you want to import random for this and usually put all of your imports or your modules because you can download stuff and import it into this python thing um, you want to put them at the top it's just better it's more organized looks nicer so random comes with the game uh, comes with sorry the program but you need to import it for some reason rather than having it in so this way when we do a random function every random function requires you to write random first so since it, it if you just did random dot rand int which is producing a random integer um if you don't have the import random this won't make any sense to the computer this is the module it's looking for in your code but it doesn't have it so if you have the import it'll be like okay we know what random is we now have all the functionality so you can do any random function just like you can import web browser and do stuff with your web browser which makes more sense um so yeah you do web browser commands um, so yeah, when we're outside, we want to make a variable which stores the value of the player, you know, the enemy, the opponent's choice. That's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do random. So it's going to do some sort of random function. Dot choice, right? You need to bracket, and then you type in the sequence or the list, and the list is suitables. So now it's going to pick something random from suitables. But wait, we need to make it so it's equal to a variable. Opponent equals there we go. So what we do now is now that we have the opponent's thing, it's rock, paper, or scissors, we need to make it so it goes through and checks both of ours. And so we okay, let's check let's run it. Actually let's just run it right now. Let's just run it. Save. You have to save it every time. What do you choose? I choose egg. Please write proper scissors. Okay, four, eight, point two, point five, rock, and ends, because that's where the code ends. We haven't written anything after that. It just prints out. No, it doesn't. It just lets us enter it, and then it just does a, a opponent equals that. So it works so far. Let's check our success criteria. So we've got this one. I'm doing like these as ticks. We've got ask for our choice, input our choice. 
We've got randomly generate opponent's choice because we did a random dot, you know, random statement. Now he wants us to tell us what our opponent chose. That's very simple. All we need to do is write out print, so it prints it off on screen, and opponent. It's going to print out the opponent's choice. So, okay, we don't want it just to print out rock. We want it to print out the this opponent chose. So to do that, you can actually put variables with strings in this case. So you do a quotation mark, or a single, if you like, uh, apostrophe. Um, you could write the opponent, you can write anything you like here, chose, and then you end it and do a plus. And now, if this was an integer, we could just print it normally, but if you add strings next to it, as we've done here, um, you need to do str to turn it into a string so it fits in with the rest of it. But we don't need to do that right now because it already is a string. What you're storing as opponent is picking something from suitables. So it's literally going to be the opponent chose and then whatever <coughs> whatever the opponent chose, which is in suitables. So the opponent chose rock, paper, scissors. Uh, yeah, so we'll end it there. So you just close it off with a bracket. You can add more stuff after it. You could add another variable or you could add more words. The reason I left a space here is so that it looks normal. Yes, actually I want to end... Do I want to end it? Nah, it's fine. We don't need punctuation. <coughs> so when you're done with that... Okay, now let's run it. Uh, welcome to our rock, paper, scissors... Uh, I should have said rock, paper, scissors game, what am I doing? What do you choose, rock? That works. The opponent chose rock. Let's try it again, make sure it is doing random. Let's change that to uh, rock, paper, scissors game. What do you choose? Run. Welcome to our rock, paper, scissors game. What do you choose? Rock. Scissors. It does do it randomly. That's good. So let's go to our success criteria. Now it tells us what the opponent chose. Now this is the largest part of the code. Then tell us who wins. Okay, so it's got to tell who wins. So what we've got to do is got to check which thing each opponent chose. So it's going to take a bit of time. We've got to do if statements now. So if this conditional, like x, this will always be true. If x, then do this. That's the conditional. Okay, so if 5 is greater than 6, which it isn't, it won't do that. If it is, it will do this. So we do if, um, if player equals rock. And then it will check, yeah, um, uh, if opponent uh, equals rock, print, it's a tie. Oh no, we can do this quicker, can't we? You're thinking, okay, that makes sense, but we can do it in a quicker, more efficient way. If player equals opponent. So if they both have the same value, which they could, we could just print tie, can't we? It's a tie. Yeah, I want to do that in punctuation, so I'm going to add and do a full stop end it like that. See? That's how you add um, variables in it. If you miss the plus, it won't understand it. So that's if they equal each other. Now we've done this. Elif. Now there's a difference between elif and if. That doesn't matter. You could probably just write if here because nothing else will matter. It doesn't matter if you write elif or if. You could just write elif. So elif player um, uh, elif player equals rock, for, for example. If opponent equals scissors print you you actually win. Because you chose rock and rock beats scissors, we all know that. Paper beats rock. We can just print you win. And we're going to do this now, so that we... Okay, this is an else function. Now, an else function is written when there's only, say, like, one thing that can ever... 
So we've got to say rock equals rock and rock equals scissors, but there's only one thing left. So rather than writing out um, I'm sorry, I don't know where I was. I think I was talking about else. So if you have one thing left, I was I was interrupted, sorry. Um and you don't want to write it out, you could just do else. And the else function works when if no conditions above are met. So if it goes into the elif and this if function is not met, it will just do this. No matter what. So rather than writing out another conditional, we could just write else. Because there's only one possible scenario left. He's picked paper, which means he wins. So we're going to write else print you. Oh uh, no, sorry. You, yeah, you lose. Now that's done. We've only got a few things left. We can do elif player equals. We've got to do it the same now. Scissors. If uh, we could just copy and paste out the uh, code, it's simple now. We could do scissors. If opponent picks rock, print you lose. Actually, if opponent picks paper, print you win, you lose. And now we've just got to do the last one, which is else, because there's only one last actual scenario. Because that means elif player picks, you know, uh, what's the other one? We've got rock, scissors, paper. If opponent, if opponent, yeah, equals rock. So so paper beats rock. Oh yeah, we could just print. We could just copy this out now, can't we? So it should work now. If we just run it, it should tell us who wins by just telling us what he picks. Run module. Oh, we got an invalid syntax. If player, I've forgotten. When you're doing an if statement, you have to do double equals or elif. Whenever you're doing a conditional to check whether something is something else, comparing something, you have to do double equals. I don't know how I forgot that, but I did. That's my fault. What am I doing in my life? <laughs> Jokes. Okay, now it should run. Let's try it. What do you choose? Paper. The opponent chose scissors. You lose. Well, there you go, it works. We'll try another go. If you want me to do another video with another game, please comment down below or leave a like. What do I do? I choose paper. The opponent chooses chose paper. It's a tie. It works. So yeah, you can try that out now for yourself. You can copy this. Uh, I don't know if I'll leave any files below, but yes. Um, so yeah. Uh, this You can also make it so it repeats itself. It can ask the user if it wants to play again, and then go back. But I want you to try and figure that out. But if you, if you don't, you can ask for another video, and I'll surely I'll do that. Leave a like, comment if you want more Python videos, or like. Um, thank you for watching. This is this is Paradox Gaming. Well, this is more like Paradox Instructions. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.